Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're talking about free fall. So with that, let's give it a go. So in order to understand what free fall is, let's do a little example. So let's just say we have a bowling ball that is suspended in the air. And let's just say that this bowling ball is a certain height above the ground. Now, if we were to take some scissors and snip the rope holding the bowling ball up, what would happen is that the bowling ball would start moving towards the earth. So as the bowling ball is moving towards the surface of the earth, what is happening is that the force of gravity is causing this ball to accelerate downwards. And this acceleration is called a lowercase g, little g. And little g can be approximated to around 10 meters per second squared. So what does this value mean? So if we were to assume that the ball started off with an initial velocity of zero meters per second, this would mean that after one second of moving down towards the surface, the bowling ball would have a velocity of around 10 meters per second. After two seconds, this velocity would increase by another 10 meters per second. So it goes from 10 meters per second to 20 meters per second. And then after three seconds, the velocity is going to be 30 meters per second. And after four seconds, it's 40 meters per second and so on. So what this means is that as the ball is accelerating downward, the velocity is increasing by 10 meters per second every second that the ball is falling towards the earth. So this is what free fall is. Free fall is a term that describes an object moving only under the influence of the force of gravity. So now, what if we were to take the same scenario, but basically compare how two different objects fall? So the first object is our bowling ball, and the bowling ball has a mass of around 2.27 kilograms. In addition, we also have a weight. This weight is around 5 kilograms, so the weight is around double the mass of the bowling ball. So assuming that there is no air resistance, which of these objects would reach the ground first? So let's start off by examining the bowling ball. So we know that the bowling ball is 2.27 kilograms. And in order to answer which object reaches the ground first, we have to know the acceleration of both of these objects. So to see what the acceleration is, what we're gonna use is Newton's law of gravitation. So Newton's law of gravitation states that the force of gravity between two bodies is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of body one, times the mass of body two, divided by the distance squared. And in this case, the gravitational force for the bowling ball is going to be equal to the gravitational constant, times the mass of the earth, times the mass of the bowling ball, divided by x squared. So what we see here is that this expression can be used in order to find the acceleration of the bowling ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug in the mass of the bowling ball into this equation. And when I do that, I get this expression. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to express the force that this bowling ball is experiencing. So we know that force is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. So since we're talking about the gravitational force being exerted on the bowling ball, what we're gonna do is substitute in this equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute in the mass of the bowling ball once again to this side of the equation. And when we do that, what we can see is we can start canceling out. So we can cancel out the mass of the bowling ball. And when we do that, we see that the acceleration of the bowling ball is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the distance squared. So this is going to be the acceleration of the bowling ball. So what about the weight? So remember that the weight is 5 kilograms, and it's nearly double the mass of the bowling ball. So will this increased weight have an effect on the rate at which this object falls? Well, when we bring in our universal law of gravitation, we're gonna express it in this way, where the gravitational force on the weight here is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the weight divided by the distance squared. So when we substitute in the mass of the weight, we get this expression. And then when we express the force acting upon the weight here, what we get is this expression. The mass of the weight times the acceleration of the weight is equal to this expression. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute in the mass of the weight, and then when I do this, I see that I can cancel out the five kilogram here and the five kilogram here. This leaves us with this expression. The acceleration of the weight is equal to big G times the mass of the Earth divided by x squared. So what is this math telling us? 
So basically what it's saying is that assuming that X is the same for the weight and the bowling ball, this means that the acceleration of the bowling ball is equal to the acceleration of the weight. And if we assume that X is close to the surface of the Earth, we can say that the acceleration of the bowling ball and the acceleration of the weight are both equal to little g, which is around 10 meters per second squared. So assuming that there's no air resistance, both the weight and the ball accelerate at the same rate. Therefore, both reach the ground at the same time. So now that we know what free fall is, let's do some non-passage-based practice questions. So an object is dropped from a cliff with an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. The object has a final velocity of 28 meters per second once the object hits the ground. What was the vertical displacement of the object? So take a moment, pause the video, and see what the answer is for yourself. So hopefully you pause the video. The answer to this question is going to be choice A. So let's see why. So I would like to start off by first drawing a picture. So we know that the object is dropped off a cliff, therefore the object is moving down toward the surface. And let this little line here represent the surface. We know that the initial velocity at the very top of the cliff is equal to zero meters per second, and we know that the final velocity is equal to negative 28 meters per second. Now the reason why I put a negative sign here is because the velocity vector of the ball is pointing downwards. Therefore, I'm giving this velocity a negative value because remember that velocity is a vector, therefore it has both magnitude and direction. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to draw a table that tells our knowns and unknowns. So when we do this, we see that we know what the initial velocity is, what the final velocity is. But however, we don't know the time it took for the object to fall to the Earth, and we also don't know what the vertical displacement is. So in order to answer this question, we need our kinematic equations, and we have three of them. We have Vf equals Vi plus At, Yf equals Yi plus Vit plus At squared over 2, and Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2A times delta Y. So the best equation to use in this scenario is going to be the third one. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2a times delta y, where delta y is the vertical displacement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start plugging in values to this equation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to substitute in for the acceleration g. Now note that I took out the initial velocity because the initial velocity is equal to 0 meters per second. Therefore, we can just take that out of the equation. And note here that I gave a negative sign to the acceleration due to gravity. And the reason why is because remember that this acceleration vector is pointing towards the ground, therefore I'm going to assign it a negative value. So when I start simplifying this equation and putting in values, I get this expression here. And then after I do some algebra, I get a vertical displacement of negative 39.2 meters. So that's why choice A is the correct answer. So let's do another question. An object is thrown straight upwards with an initial velocity of how high will the object go? So take a moment, pause the video, and answer this for yourself. So hopefully you pause the video. The correct answer is going to be choice C, and let's see why. So let's start off once again by drawing a picture. So this time, the object is moving upwards into the air. And we know from the question stem that the initial velocity is equal to 5 meters per second. So when we make our tables of knowns and unknowns, we know what vi is, we know what vf is, and we know what g is. However, we don't know the time and we don't know the vertical displacement. So the equation that I'm going to use in this place is going to be this one again. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start substituting in the values. And then when we go through the math, we see that the vertical displacement is going to be equal to around 1.25 meters. So this is going to be the highest height that this particular object will reach. So I hope this video helped you understand what free fall is and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.